Hello, welcome. Please pause the video, read the problem, try it on your own, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so here we have a type of problem that's going to fall into a category called binomial probability. So we're going to set this up. We're not going to talk too much about the background here of how binomial probability works. We're just going to apply it. And how do we do that? Well, a drug used to prevent motion sickness is found to be effective about 80% of the time. Okay, so this is one probability. I'm just going to write 0 0.8 because I'm not sure if this is the probability that we're trying to measure, P, or its complement, Q. Seven friends prone to seasickness go on a sailing cruise and all take this drug. Find the probability rounded to two decimal places that at most five get seasick. So you see this is saying find the probability that at most five get seasick. Okay, so we are concerned, let's say Q is where they don't get seasick. We want to find our success in this case is where they do get seasick. And that sounds a little cynical, but the idea is that we call P a success, not because they got sick and we want them to get sick, but because that's what we're trying to measure. The success is the thing we're trying to actually uh, calculate. So the generic formula that we might use here is to say, all right, we have n trials, we're choosing r of them at a time, we multiply that by the probability of our success to the rth power times q to the n minus r power. And I'll, let's, let's just apply this to see what this is even saying. So n is the number of trials. So there are seven people. Each person can be thought of as an individual trial of the drug. And we're looking at all the ways that two of them, no, at most five get C6, so at most five get seasick, and then there's a 20% chance that they get seasick five times, so it's 0.2 multiplied five times, and then a 0.8 chance that they don't get seasick, seasick for the other two times. Now this right here, this would measure, well, this would measure that five get seasick, right? Five get seasick, seasick. But this says at most five. So in order to actually measure this at most five, you'd have to start where no one gets seasick. So that's, oops, seven C zero. That is a 0.2 chance that people get seasick, but to the zero power, no times. And then 0.8, they get, everyone gets better. And then one person gets seasick. That is a 0.2 chance of that happening to the first power once, and a 0.8 chance of that happening uh, not, if I'm not getting seasick, and it's happening six times, so it's to the sixth power, all the way up to five people getting seasick. And we can do this on the calculator, it's possible. I'll, I'll show that in a second. And I just want to point out that there are really two other options here. So there's a function on the calculator, the binome PDF it's called. It gets you each individual probability. It's called binome PDF. It's any particular uh, binomial probability. And then if we want to add up from 0 all the way up to some point, let's say 5 here, add them all up together, there's the binome CDF function, which does it all in one step. And then there are situations where you might want to use the complement. So here, um, what I'm talking about in this case, the complement, I might just use binome CDF, as I'll show in a moment. It might be the easiest. But just so you're aware, the complement would say, well, there are only what? eight possibilities here. No one can get seasick all the way up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight different things that can happen in a number of people that can get seasick. So if I just think of that as my full sample space, 100% of what could happen, an alternate strategy kind of emerges, right? Here we're saying at most five, so five or less. This is at most five. Okay. But on the other side of it, its complement is this side right here. And this is at least 6. And that's everything that can happen. Either at most 5 or at least 6 people get sick. That's all the possibilities. So if it, if it just so happens that it's difficult to calculate one probability, you could say, well, we'll find the complement. In this case, at least 6 is a little bit less work. It would be 100% of what you have, 1, minus the probability that six people get six, sick. <laughs> so seven trials, six people get sick. There's a 0.2 to the sixth chance of that happening, and then a 0.8 to the first of, a not, of them not getting seasick, plus everyone getting seasick.
0.2 to the 7th times 0.8 to the 0. This would also get you the same thing. And this is essentially this little piece right here in parentheses is the complement at least 6. And we're subtracting it from 1 because, again, all we have right here, everything, this is 100% of all the possibilities, which is 1. So you're taking 1, subtracting the complement, and what remains is the probability you're looking for. Now, how does this all work on the calculator? Okay, well, let's say we wanted to do, add them all up 1 through 5, one at a time. So what you could do, you could enter, first of all, 7, go to math, go to probability. Here, the third choice is a combination. You hit that. Oops, I hit the wrong thing. You go to 7, math, probability, choice 3 is a combination. And then you do 0. Now, that, of course, if you, this is only, there's one way to choose nothing, so you don't really need to calculate that. 7, choose 0 is 1. But I'm, if I'm calculating this piece right here, I could do it manually, times point. 2 to the 0, right, times 0.8 to the 7. And you can see this is, is a little bit tedious, right? That's the first step. Then, plus, repeat the process until you're done with all five. A slightly, slightly faster way is to hit second variables. Now, it's choice A on my calculator. It's the binome PDF, so I hit alpha A. Trials, in this case, I would say there's seven trials. The probability of them getting sick, P, is 0.2. And then X really is the R value of each individual binome PDF. So I hit 0. I hit Enter, Enter. And that gets me the first probability here. Then I, what I would do to speed things up, I hit plus. I'd go up, up. Here, now if I hit Enter on binome PDF, it, it pastes it over here. All I've got to do is change the 0 to a 1 hit 1, and then enter, right, oops, <laughs> um, oh boy, I hit enter, and then I keep repeating that process, and I can get through the whole thing, but the, probably the fastest way is hit second variable, and then go to alpha B for binome CDF, so here I hit seven trials, the chance of getting CSIC is 0.2, my X value, I'll enter 5, and that will add up all the probabilities from 0 through 5, all in one shot. So it's a pretty high probability, right, 0.9963 about, um, that this will happen, over 99.9%. .9%. Okay, so those are a couple of approaches to this problem, and really you, sometimes it'll be beneficial to add up one at a time. Other times it'll be advantageous to use the binome CDF. Other times the complement. It's really about recognizing what's best for you. All right, thank you.